Good morning, Pastor John Davis of the Amityville Community Church. Father God, we do want to thank you for this day. We thank you for your kindness, your love, your mercy, and your grace. You are a holy, righteous, beautiful, wonderful God. There is nobody like you in any way, shape, or form. We ask you now to just bless this time in your word for your glory and the much-needed good of a desperate people of yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, I'd like to start off reading a passage. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. And this is what it says. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. Amen. Let me read that again. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. When you get a thought, let me just say this. The accuser of the brethren, Satan, the devil, that wicked one, he seeks to lay upon us burdens, guilt, such a brokenness that we would become spiritually, mentally, and emotionally paralyzed. The devil some sim simply comes to seek, to kill, and destroy. But I'm here to tell you today that Jesus has hope. First, let me give you some examples of individuals who understood the power of grace in unusual measure. Let me say that again. The power of grace in unusual measure. Bear with me. First of all, take our brother David. David was a man who was guilty of murder and adultery. But David understood the forgiveness of God in such a way that he still went on to be king. Let me say that again. David understood the forgiveness, the mercy, the grace of God in such a way that he went on to be king. We live in a day where we want to hold people accountable. And I guess we can. But David understood that God did not hold him accountable. Now, we realize that David had some punishments for his transgression in the murder of Uriah and the adultery with Bathsheba. But understand this, that God did not kill him God did not strike him down. As a matter of fact, he continued to be king. I'm always impressed with the fact that David continued to lead Israel. I want to encourage you in this. Do not live in the past. Do not let regret, past sins, past transgressions, past shortcomings. Do not let them hold you up. David continued to be king. Eventually, Solomon comes through his, his uh, marriage with Bathsheba. But David did not just crawl into a hole and say, I'm unworthy. David knew he was unworthy, but he also knew God had made him worthy. Amen. This is what is the great magnificent truth of the cross of Jesus. When Jesus convicts us of sin, please understand the difference. When Jesus convicts us of sin, he convicts us in such a way that we walk away with a sense of hope, with a sense of enthusiasm, with a sense of optimism that things will get better. Jesus will convict us of sin. Amen. But his conviction through the power of the Holy Spirit is not heartbreaking to the point where I am incapacitated to be used by God. Amen. The accuser of the brethren wants to bring into your mind and your heart a guilt, an overwhelming sense of dread, an overwhelming sense of 
impossibility of moving on. Jesus gives you hope. Amen. The accuser of the brethren has really limited resources, deception, deceit, trickery. God may grant him permission as he did with Job, but really deceit. He will make you think that you are less than you are in the sight of God. He will make you think that God cannot use you anymore. But remember what the scripture says, you are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I'm going to just read a line from Romans chapter 8 verse 1. I'm not going to read the whole text because I want you to hear what God is saying to some of you. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I know some out there want to read the whole passage, but there are some people who are just worn down with their past faults, their past sins, the brokenness of their life. I want to let you know there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. As far as I can tell you, no other religion offers this type of freedom. No other set of, of religious truths offer this, offer this freedom that your past is wiped away at the Calvary cross where the blood of the lamb slain before the foundation of the world was poured out for you. Come on now. I want to free us up today. I want to let you know that his mercies are new every morning. There is therefore now no condemnation. Do not listen to the accuser of the brethren. Some of us, we can get lost thinking about how things, how we wish things could have been. But I want to let you know that Jesus has made all things right. He's getting his glory in our brokenness, in our fallenness. In our sin and our transgression, where sin abounded, grace what abounded even more. There is no, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I want, I want to tell you another passage here. I just want to give you a sense of power for today, and hopefully you'll keep this tucked away in your mind, because no doubt. Anybody who is seeking to walk with God. And let me just go back to David for a moment. David went on to be king. And he did not just hide and sulk. The easiest thing to do is walk away from what God has called us to do because of our sin. Think of Peter having denied the Lord. How easy it would have been for him to say, no, Lord, I'm not worthy. Choose someone else. At the most critical hour of your trial, at the most critical hour of your betrayal, I failed. Lord, I am not worthy to be the leader. Peter knew he was not worthy, but he also knew that Jesus had made him worthy. Come on now. This is the great, amazing mystery of the gospel, that both truths walk hand in hand. We ourselves may know we are unworthy, but we also know God has made us not only worthy, but more than conquerors through him who have loved us. Oh, yes. Peter preaches on the day of Pentecost, no doubt with a boldness, a bravery. No doubt he knew what he had done just days before, weeks before, and yet, and yet, he was not emotionally paralyzed. He was not mentally incapacitated. As a matter of fact, it would, see that, it would seem that the forgiveness from that grave act provoked him. It was a catalyst for greater fervor and greater service. Amen. Amen. When you read this passage in John chapter 8, uh, you could read the whole section, but I want to focus. This woman is caught in the act of adultery and says in John chapter 8, verse 10, when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now, clearly Jesus is saying, I do not condemn you. But that last part, go and sin no more. Again, as preachers, we may not really preach 
what is embodied in what Jesus says. When he says, go and sin no more, he's saying, sister, I know you could go do better. Sister, as a matter of fact, I have freed you up so you're going to walk in a newness and in a power of life that you've never had before because you were worried about what people thought. You were worried about how I thought about you. Your guilt, your sin was weighing you down. But now when I tell you to go and sin no more, it means that I'm going to place in you a power to do better than you've ever done before. Amen. Amen. I'll leave others to get involved with all the theological banter about go and sin no more. But I want to encourage you that, that that woman walked away with a pep in her step. What an understatement. With a joy in her heart, with an enthusiasm for life that had probably had not been seen for many years. Amen. Jesus does that. He gives you enthusiasm. He gives you joy. He gives you a good cheer. I'm learning. Notice I haven't said I've learned. I'm learning. That we have not because we ask not. Why not ask the Lord for some good chair today? Bring his mind, bring to your mind his word. That you know what? David sinned, but God used him to do great and marvelous things. Moses killed a man, but he was the deliverer. Amen. I want to encourage you today. Do not look at what you have not done. Look at what God is going to do through you. Do not look at what is incomplete, but look at the things that God has completed in you and what he will yet complete in you because he is a great God. Amen. Amen. The accuser of our brethren has been brought down. He's been cast down. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Isn't that a word? That we are free, that we can walk in a newness of life, we could walk in the glory of Jesus. We could walk in forgiveness of sins. We could walk in uplifted hearts. Bless the Savior. Bless him for the shed blood at Calvary's cross. I just want to encourage you with that today. In case you are feeling a little down. In case you're feeling that life is not just what you thought it should be. I, I just want to tell you it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Because... Jesus has good things to come. You could read that in Hebrews. Good things to come. I, I know that, that some of us, we're, we, we're, we're thinking about what happened 20, 30 years ago, how life could be different. And I want to tell you, life can be different. Today, you know, the world tells you today is the first day of the rest of your life. They got that out the Bible. They got that out of the Bible out of... Um, from the book of Lamentations, chapter three, when it says the Lord's mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Every day we get up, there is a brand new start to life. The only problem is we don't always think like that because we haven't been, our minds are not renewed. Amen. But when our minds are renewed, we could wake up every morning and say, this is a new day. That yesterday is under the blood of Jesus. Yesterday is under the cross of Calvary. And today I have a new day, a brand new slate. Oh yes, the mystery of the gospel, the mystery of no condemnation, the mystery of being more than conquerors to him who loved us. We walk by faith and not by sight. Don't let us be deceived by the accuser. Don't let our feelings, don't let our memories, don't let our, our wandering minds confuse us. Let's, and that's why you got to meditate on his glorious word. Memorize that passage. Memorize these three. Memorize them and call them to mind. Cast down down those imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Oh yes, there's no condemnation. My brothers, my sisters, please be blessed in Jesus. Please have a wonderful day in the Savior. Please enjoy the newness of life, the joy of heart, and the chair of spirit that Jesus has given to us through the power of the cross, through the love of the Father, and through the, the dwelling of the Holy Spirit in his people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Be free.